You call yourself an artist. On what ground? Drown, baby, drown. Download the One Page Spotlight app for artists. Uh, I have few uh, in this session. I have few specific questions also, which I wanted to take it to each one of you, so that um, with your area and expertise where you have been coming from, so we'd like to have a more clear understanding from your point of view. Uh, I'd like to go to uh, uh, Sanjit in understanding that you know. Uh, when you were talking about the market responsiveness in terms of art-based products, uh, how do you see the changing understanding of what what are the things that people are looking when they are buying a product, and what what is the connective link of uh, people's understanding who are towards buying products in a, in a in a platform like yours where you have initiated? Yeah, yeah, I think I think see, uh, it it goes on in in from it and it comes in from two directions, right? And it comes in from the direction that you know, as, as an organization, uh, we are spending a lot of time in in kind of bringing products and marketing in such a way where we tell uh, the kind of craft that we work with with a proper story, right? That that I was talking about earlier. You know, that that is something which is kind of because this is not kind of the the, the product that we do in terms of our craft products today with artisans. Is is not something which a general uh, a buyer coming doing an impulsive buying would purchase, right? And that's not that's not the kind of buyer that we also want to target. So we are we are we are looking at more of uh, you know someone who who comes and who understands uh, maybe you know a craft background or who may, who 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 is actually willing to spend time in trying to understand that story, uh, you know trying to understand that product what what an artisan is making today, and that's where our focus is you know onto our platform that we. That we have created today for the communities, and secondly, obviously on the price point, because whatever whatever product that we are making, see the the best use, ultimately whatever artisans make has to sell in the market. Otherwise, how will you know their sustainability arise from from the art that they are practicing right. today, right? True. And that is something which will come when we are having that product with the right price point, and that's something which we extensively do with our with our market and inside teams, right? Where we understand that you know that this is the kind of craft or a kind of a finished product that we can sell at a price point and that's how we we, we try to backlink it into a supply chain and try to understand that whatever process we have uh, you know with our artisans and communities today how we can marry both of these demand and supply together and create that product within that price range because for us it's very important that whatever we earn and whatever we are selling on the product in the market right there is a particular percentage of it and there is a particular profit that goes back to the community right and that's that's something that we you know we strongly uh, basically keep our focus on uh, so that they are also able to you know foresee the kind of uh, demand they would be getting you know in the next month or maybe in the next 6 months or a quarter and they can also see how sustainable it is for them to continue doing this for 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 their families basically i think that's a, that's a very valid and very important when you when you look at the complete sustainability uh, factor of sustainability uh, comes into place i think it's very very uh, well said and now i'd like to go to uh, uh, kapil to ask one very very important aspect of uh, uh, looking at art as an as a product and taking it to the cart basically which we are where we are talking about is that as an art curator as an uh, artist yourself how do you look at uh, what are your how do you criteria yourself in terms of selecting the artwork and how do you how do i do take it forward so in respect of uh, artwork selection yes it depends uh, it depends uh, that what kind of art show i am organizing or what kind of art show i am creating okay. uh, it depend at that time uh, i have to look that uh, like uh, my last show was pratyutit uh, that was a uh, group show of 40 artists in bangalore so the pratyutit uh, the meaning of pratyutit is uh, about to start uh, about to start or uh, enlightenment of a uh, lamp which has to be start which has to the thing that uh, 
so what i had done i had taken the 40 artists those are having good artworks from different kind of owners there were some realistic artists some abstract artists and some are making the prints so but they have very good work and they uh, they are upcoming artists they didn't have such kind of big name like other uh, established artists right. so this is the way when i select for the artworks while thinking of any subject while thinking of uh, any any um, concept for creating a show All right this is the way i do thank you thank you thank you i think the, that uh, calls for an understanding that you know from uh, it depends on the subject to subject or situation wise uh, in terms of your concept of your artwork or your exhibition or the kind of an uh, uh, art exhibition or the program you are doing it it changes from time to time in terms of the selection process or understanding it, right very good. right yeah so um, uh, before concluding this session where we had a from storytelling to curriculum to understanding the context of art uh, i'd like to uh, take the last question to purvi in understanding you have been uh, on throughout the journey of uh, traveling all across the world and um, uh, doing your studies as well as doing your exhibitions and putting your artwork all across um, while as a young um, upcoming artist you know where self validation and evaluation of your work and how do you before sending it to the rest of the world what are the things that uh, that you feel that when a young artist should remember and put it in their mind in terms of uh, evaluating or addressing or validating themselves when they you wanted to put it across to the to the world and showcase it to everybody so i think um you know the first place where everything starts is with your own commitment to your artwork right the amount that you're committed and the kind of time the kind of seriousness that you put in teaching yourself yes. um, you know what goes into art making or, or whatever it is that you might be doing um that is the first place that i would look into you know um how good are you at what you're doing um in terms of uh, in terms of how much you can do at that point so you know if if you are let's say like still in school and you're serious about art and let's say you know you aren't given that sort of opportunity what is the extra time that you have available and then how much of that are you investing or you know even if you're an early like a young artist who's not yet able to uh, pay your bills just with art so maybe you have a teaching job or you you have something else you know kind of time dedication and commitment that you have towards your work that is the quality of your work and uh, you know you have to constantly keep expanding you know the people they are getting um who are going to some sort of mentorship um like i've been very proactive from a very young age in reaching out to people because i knew i didn't have that kind of infrastructure around me you know i didn't have that kind of support system was no one was an artist or a creative in my family professionally um so i was always you know going out asking questions um you know kind of don't think about what people are going to think of you and how good or good you are in but it's how to reach out for you to be able to then grow with that back but over time have a couple of people who you look up to keep looking at people's work keep reading and then when the time comes you know when you are happy to send your work out spend a lot of time with your work you know talk to it um write about what you're feeling um kind of keep having this conversation and maybe when you also then have to do that work on piece a from day 1 to day 5 and then piece 2 from day to day five. no like let it be a parallel process like keep working keep making changes if you have to and at the end of it see how much of it is to your satisfaction now personally i am a bit of a perfectionist so i never find that my works are ever good enough you know i always feel that i could have done something better but it's okay as long as you know you did what you could do in the time needed and if 
And if you feel you have any thoughts on improving, like keep that for next time, you know, make a note of it. Don't just let things sit in your head because oftentimes we have so many thoughts that you tend to forget what you felt or what you, what you thought about a particular period of time. And uh, for me, like writing has been very instrumental, um, be it for coming out of like artistic blocks or for improving my work, um, you know, or like, let's say I had an important discussion, a really inspiring talk that I attended. I always write what I felt and what were the important points that I would like to take away from this person and uh, kind of maintain this journal, you know, and then maybe when before you're sending out works, like, or maybe when you're even in the process of making works, keep looking at these things around you, you know, like get out of that one um, direction mind frame, like keep seeing like, is your work exciting you? Like when you look at it or when you're making it, do you feel that you're doing something to surprise yourself? Because if you're not surprising yourself, you're probably not going to surprise other people either. And uh, try to do away with thinking while you're making and do the thinking after you make. Like that's a piece of advice which I have gotten from many, many years ago from many, many different people and I I, I, I'm a thinker, I'm a writer, you know, I also read philosophy. So a lot of times before I even make, you know, I'm analyzing so much, but do the opposite, you know, surprise yourself, do just make, just make, you know, maybe attend a random drawing workshop or like just change your medium, you know, get out of it, get out of your comfort zone and surprise yourself because oftentimes you'll see that's when the more interesting works are coming about and yeah so before you're sending your works out try to engage in all of these activities you know and let the work be fun for you because if it's not fun for you it's going to show I mean it may be accepted but there's going to be a difference between your work and someone else's work who's enjoyed it more right so very I think uh, very well yeah. said because uh uh, first of all, I think uh, engaging yourself and being proactive in uh, moving forward and try to see that, you know, whatever you want to, you go and find it yourself. That is a, a very, very important point which you have touched on. Second is a regular interaction and dialogue and also surprising yourself. I think these three points were really rightly put it. And uh, so before, I, uh, thank you. For before, may, I, may, may I come in here? Yes, uh, yes, of course. Yes, just, please, please. Just, a few, if you, a few words. In yes, fact, yes. what I, I, I uh, vibe so uh, well, so completely with what Jay and Purvi said. And, you know, I just uh, uh, was transporting back to the time when I paint and my feelings and things so that, you know, what they said uh, is totally, totally, totally real time. Uh, but what I wanted to, I am an abstract artist. I'm a self-taught art artist. And I just used to paint for myself and started with oils earlier. And then I learned in 98, I learned uh, how to handle acrylic. And I just, now I, acrylic is my favorite media. But uh, what, what Puri said, one, one thing which is very, very interesting is that if you, you, if you are in love with what you have done, if you have just put your feelings in, into your work and, uh, and not done it mechanically, then that work talks, talks not only to me, talks to the everybody who looks at it, because uh, um, uh, what it is is that what I feel, what I always say is that um, art is actually a slice of our life at that point of time, which we put on the canvas or on the, on paper. And when a person looks at it, that person's that slice of that person's life at that point of time is interacting, and that is so true, really. You know. Some work, um, I haven't really liked it so much. But then if I put, when I, when I work as all artists, I think I work in series. I just sit down and I work, 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 work. I take two, three weeks off and then I work, work, work. And then like Puri was talking about, it was so nice. That journal, but uh, around the time, I write a poem or two, you know, which is actually, which echoes the, what I have done. It may be my emotional state at that time, my sorrow, my anger, 
my boy. But that just a little exhibition of those words, I just put it up as a part of the artist statement. And it is so nice and people, um, people vibe. You know, they just read it and they seem to get into the painting uh, more easily. One other thing I just would like to just quickly um, talk about is that, um, you know, Picasso, if you look at it, look at him objectively, uh, all of you were talking about figurative uh, art and, you know, symmetric art and things like that. But if you look at Picasso, I shouldn't say anything. But, but to say that it was really, really great art. Uh, I, I, my point, the point I'm trying to make is that two things which made artists famous. One is somebody who was supportive and somebody who was writing, writing, writing. That's what happened to Picasso. When Picasso, Picasso would just put a cycle handle on something and uh, his biographer uh, would write, Oh, this is like this, this is like this. A story is created, which is what Jai was talking about, I think. A story is created around that. And people reading that story, look at that artwork and think that it is great. But yes, a small child may say that like the emperor's uh, clothes, you know, child may say something and uh, another person may say something. And actually it may be the truth, but story is there. We all hang on to the story and then we become famous. And um, uh, number two is that all artists, even, uh, uh, even um, um, Raja Ravi Verma was thrown out of the palace. They didn't want, nobody wanted, you know, like, uh, like you're saying, they asked, what are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? He was thrown out of the palace. He said, you're a um, kalanga, you know, you're a, you're a, a um, slur to the, to, to our family, et cetera, et cetera. But how, like you were saying, uh, Kapil was talking about multiplication. It was only because uh, in those days, Ravi Varma found out a technique for making multiple prints. So for, for Saraswati, yes, goddess also, the reference was, everything was talked about here. Goddess, that reference was also there. It is only because of that, that multiplication is very, very, very important. And uh, the last bit I wanted to say was that Art Mantram, I just made it, it in the chat. Art Mantram, uh, um, uh, promote art, artists, as well as art awareness. I feel that Awareness is the most important thing to be cultivated. I wish everybody, all the people are like Bombay, you know, people in Bombay. In Bombay, you will find in Kalagoda around, um, around Jagir Art Gallery, auto rickshaws have got small nine inches by nine inches square of um, a raza. You know, a small little thing will be hanging or even uh, Hussein or uh, Padamsi, something or the other. Why? because somebody is making a lot of prints and selling it at five rupees. So part of the awareness creation is also printing and distributing everywhere. You know, like the like Christianity, when it is spreading, they make a lot of handbills yeah. and distribute it all around and people read it and get attracted. So that may be one way. And are we discussing about what are the strategies later on in another but, yes, I think uh, yeah. we will go to the opportunities segment where we'll be talking about it in a yeah. more detail. So these are things which we have to look at and perhaps, uh, you know, as an outcome of this, perhaps we could take out some of these points really um, uh, together. Yeah, I Put think you have put yeah. it very rightly uh, when you are talking about the inclusiveness of connecting to everyone and making it art uh, connected to every each and every segment of the society where you would give the very wonderful example of Kalagora and the rickshaws. I, I have seen it myself and it's very, very, very rightly said. And thank you very much for your inputs. Uh, let's uh, take it a little step forward. Uh, we had a complete a comprehensive understanding about uh, art landscape, our challenges. And in spite of the challenges, what are the uh, welcoming opportunities we have. So when we now try to look at more in depth into the opportunities segment about mm, mm, uh, directly from the point of view, you as uh, individuals who have experienced 
uh, your own journey, how would you like to uh, guide uh, young artists and artisans to take it forward? And when we're talking about the opportunities, I think this is more about your understanding and your perspective and your thoughts in terms of sharing. So I would like to start with Jay about uh, telling us about the uh, role of mentoring and formal education, the role of formal education in art, why it is important, how, how it is uh, going to change, uh, create more better opportunities for artists in, in the coming days, and what is your take on it? So if you can just take it forward. So again, like we've already mentioned that uh, I am a separate artist, but I will make it very clear that I do not think that a fine art school education is worthless at all by any means. Just because I did teach myself how to paint, it does not mean that I am better than anyone. Right. There is absolutely a hundred percent of things that are taught in uh, an art school or a formal education setup that I don't know till today. Yes, there are several things that I don't know, and I'm still discovering them now. Right. On the other hand, the self-taught side of things allows you a little bit more freedom to experiment and fail. Yeah. But it's also a tougher way to work because you may not have the right mentor there to give you feedback. Yes. Right. I think Purvi will attest to that, that if you do something and it doesn't work, somebody will tell you in an art school, this is terrible, do it again, change your idea, think of this, use this reference. Some kind of feedback comes in at some point, either your peers or your mentors or somebody. As a separate artist, you have to push yourself to find all of that. So my definition here of formal education will be slightly different. What I will say is, if you are teaching yourself, don't just do it randomly. Talk to someone, set an agenda, set a curriculum for yourself and set a timeline for yourself so that you can continuously keep looking into things, reading into things in a good chronological order. So you get context. You understand the value of certain moments in time, as well as the geopolitical scenario around it, leading to perhaps the creation of a movement or a style or the use of particular materials in that moment. Right. One must also really in depth go in and understand how the market works, the various parts of it. How does one buy and sell? What are the available avenues? What worked at what time and how? What failed, why and how? What's yeah. currently in play and what should be done going forward using all of that knowledge? These are very, very critical, important things that many young artists who are starting out right now may not have access to the knowledge of. And it's important for them to hear this because I've seen many, many young uh, artists starting out very gung-ho saying, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make art. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to make products. I'm going to sell it. And then sit on Instagram, put all their stuff up and wonder why nobody's buying anything. Yes. So it's very important to have a plan in place to understand how things work before you throw all your eggs into one basket. I think it's also important. Like you said, it's yeah. very, it's yeah. very, very important. Yeah, I would like to just one point to you. Uh, uh, can I, like, yeah. yeah, sure. Complete. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I just sure. want to complete one last thing. So it's yeah, sure, sure. very important that uh, young artists also understand the value of their work and understand how contracts and MOUs work. If you are giving your artwork to someone, make sure that you're, you've got something in writing that protects it. Yeah, You have to make sure that whatever artwork you're producing, you're protecting the IP of it. So nobody can rip you off and just take your artwork, make a thousand prints and sell it and you don't get anything out of it. It's important to understand how to protect yourself as well as put yourself out there in an even mm -hmm. manner. I've seen it before. People have taken my artwork, put it on a bunch of mugs and sold it. I didn't see a cent of it. So it's important to know what you're producing, where you're selling it, who is selling it for you, and how safe it is. Things will go wrong. People will take your work, they'll put it on a hoodie and sell it as yours. You don't have 100% control over everything that goes on on the internet. But what you can do is try to protect yourself as much as possible to be able to say, yes, I'm going to be able to produce something, build a community around it, and then pay attention to your community. Listen. Right. If your clientele is saying something, listen. If the world is saying something, listen. Don't be tone deaf and just say, I'm going to keep doing my own thing all the time. 
sometimes it pays to have your ear to the ground mm. and see what's happening if you can't see trends you'll be left to the side of the road right. so it's very important to kind of look down that road and i'm saying this as somebody who is pushing very hard to get print making back into the eye of the general public it's something that we have a very proud history of in this country and i think it's time that we start getting people to understand okay you can't invest in a massive painting that 6 feet by 6 feet to put on your wall okay maybe you can buy a collection of smaller prints to fill that wall right. you don't have to break your pocket you can still support the artist community and keep producing cultural change along the way as well if we can start getting this ball rolling for people to understand what they can and can't do at a particular time and find alternate solutions to it then we're all just going to be stuck doing the same thing continuously for the next 10 years and then we'll have the same conversation again and be like oh you know what this is something we should have done back then right so as artists be aware of what's happening put a plan into place and do it i waited way too long to start my website i did it this year which is a really dumb move but it's helped a lot a lot more people are talking to me about my art a lot more people are coming to me about my art and using social media will help you garner the kind of audience you want right but don't forget that physical exhibitions are equally important as much as you can do them like we spoke about experience before seeing a picture online is only one part of it until you're in front of the thing immersed in it there's nothing there and i'm saying this as somebody who's gone and seen rothko's paintings people have said like you said like a 5 year old could have done this i walked into that gallery prepared to see the paintings having studied them and still nearly broke down and i saw people walk into that gallery not having a clue of what was in there stand in front of a painting and burst into tears not having a clue why and it's the same people who will look at that same picture in a book and say ye kya hai <laughs> so that that yes. physical experience is very very important as well position yourself to be able to do exhibitions whenever possible and with that yes, i will i i completely agree that you know physical uh, presence in an uh, in from a, in the in front of an any art object is something it's an experience in itself uh, but yes there are alternatives with the changing time we are talking about digital environment online platforms we'll talk about that in the next segment but uh, thank you for your insight uh, and now uh, moving ahead i would like to put a question to specifically to purvi to know about you have been exhibiting your artwork all throughout the globe uh, uh one very important part when i have been interacting with artists and uh, in my process of and i think every one of us uh, who have interacted with different artists sanchit uh dr hari singh you will agree that you know uh people create their work but uh there is an hesitation there is an uh, worry that how to put it across how to get it exhibited how to show it to the rest of the world you know there is a, there is a process there is a preparation for that i would like to hear from you your journey your preparation how do you prepare yourself so that it gives with your experience of uh, putting exhibiting artwork all throughout the globe how do you take it up and uh, so that it can be something advice to the young artists who wanted to put their artwork in an exhibition hall so one of the first things i would say is imagine where you would like to see your work you know in the future like first create it in your imagination that you're already there because what happens is that it sets the bar really high and i think when you start imagining you are already manifesting i mean it might sound uh, a bit like um, spiritual or uh, non practical but i really believe in this i think that if you if you want to go far you need to have some sort of a picture of where you want to be and then you know you automatically start to do smaller things which will take you there um and and then the next thing is i would actually um recommend this book let me see if i have it here actually maybe i could uh i don't have it here but this is really great book uh, by an author named Austin Kleon who i found very early when i was in my college days um there's a book by him called show your work and i actually came across this at the tate modern in london and uh, i've been following all of his books because i think they're amazing uh and what the book actually taught me was don't hesitate to put your work out because you know we we're pretty much like visual creatures and you know we recall things um or we remember things because we are seeing it 
um, often. And, uh, you know, after having read that book and having gone to design school and then art school, I realized that I have to be present no matter which part of my journey I'm in, how much my work is developed or not. You know, it's never going to be perfect. So start showing your work. Uh, with this intention, I started my Instagram page about uh, three years ago now, about two or three years ago now, keeping in mind that, you know, one day I'm going to graduate. And then when I start to have shows, I want people to have seen my journey from before. So I'm not absolutely fresh and everything's not new. People, even if they start following me later, they can see, you know, where I had been and how my work is developed. And uh, keep sharing, you know, your process, your inspirations, you know, be it on Instagram, be it on Facebook, you know, you know, strike up a conversation with a stranger if it, it if that person seems like they may be into art or, you know, if you're just at a gallery and even if you're not with a friend, like talk to the next person about what they think about the work because ultimately what you're looking at is interaction and getting your work out there and, and you really don't know who you're going to come across and uh, where your work might reach. But only if you start talking about your work and putting your work out at, you know, the, the smallest of places, like you don't know where it might take you. And uh, for me, it, I mean, I think somewhere I did get lucky as well, because, um, you know, I'm a very outgoing person. I don't feel shy to talk to new people. So, you know, generally I, I'm found talking to a lot of people, even if I don't know them. And by the end of a show opening, you know, I would have made like five new friends or five new contacts. And uh, I think the key is to never think of people as contacts. You know, I never think of people as contacts per se, because I'm genuinely interested in getting to know people, understanding what they know about art or sharing or learning about their opinions, and then maybe sharing my opinion or thoughts, you know. And, uh, you know, when you network with people, very genuinely like honestly you're going to have a much better relationship and understanding of each other than if you just think of people as contacts because what i see um you know in uh, in the younger generation or maybe even when i was very young i was told that you know oh my god are you sure you want to enter this field it's really difficult if you don't know someone in the field or you know if you don't come from a family which is already into art and uh, I kind of put my foot down and I said, look, I know I have a good education. I am persistent no matter what. And uh, I think I can communicate decently well. So I will make it. I don't know how, but I will make it. So it's also about having that confidence in your practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just keep showing your work. Talk to people. Know where to listen. You know, you can't always keep um, showing. Sometimes you need to listen and absorb as well. And, uh, you know, respond to open calls, um, attend artist talks, um, go to galleries, you know, understand what is happening. And uh, slowly you'll find your own path. You know, there are people who have graduated before me who are very clear that they don't want to show their work in the white cube. And they participate in maybe art festivals, which are more democratic. Or, uh, you know, there are people who are very keen to show with certain galleries and they have attracted those kind of people. So, you know, like they say, what you seek is seeking you. I think this is a quote by Rumi, if I'm not wrong. Like, what you seek is seeking you. Um, you just need to do your work, which is do good work. Keep putting it out as much as possible. Talk to family, friends, strangers. Because if you are really passionate about what you do, and you are continuously improving at what you do, you will get the right opportunities. Don't worry about not having the right contacts or not being heard or not being seen, but do upskill. You know, if you're making a website, make sure your photographs are good, put in effort to write well, get your spell checks done. If you're putting up things for Instagram, learn what the ratios are like, learn how stories work. There is also a, a lot of data available about how um, you know social media works, like what are the best times of the day to post at, or like you'll get to know that uh, Sunday noon or like mid morning is like a good time to post at because that's when you get a lot of engagement because that's when people are available or they're on your phones. So, you know, initially when you don't have a team to take care of these things, you need to inform yourself. 
no so while you are the artist you also need to be smart about what is going on uh what is the medium of people's choice how to put things out there and if you need to learn certain skills do it if you need to buy certain basic equipment like you know recently i discovered that it would be really nice to show people my process and so i would just attach my phone to like a a a, a phone holder like tripod and put it parallelly above my work and then i create a time lapse and then i post it and that's also quite nice for people to see you know so find out find out how you can engage people and then you know opportunities will come to you when you're doing your bit opportunities will come and never think that anything is beyond your reach you know if you like a gallery you're traveling abroad or if you like a gallery or you're at an art fair talk to them don't be intimidated ask them questions you know there's a lot of times you may not be taken seriously you know because galleries have so many artists coming to them and you may not even know that maybe that gallery usually just deals with masters and you're an absolute upcoming artist so it may not be favorable for the gallery to actually give you a lot of time but at least you will learn that way so never be afraid i think you have uh, put a very very important point which i really liked is uh, documenting your process and your journey because everyone would like to uh, uh, as they would be more interested to see what you have created they would like to see how your journey began and how has been the process of creating that artwork or a product which or whatever it is you have created so people are very inquisitive about the journey and the process i think documenting those journey and process and also connecting strongly in true social media digital platform and sharing and connecting and interacting with and making network is a very very important part of it uh thank you for me uh, now well, i would like to go to sanchit to uh understand another one very important part in in terms of the opportunities when we are talking about career options from a new artist whether he is coming from a formal background of art school or an art education or a self taught artist what uh, how do you see the beyond the freelance practice or art shop what is what are the opportunities that have uh, been created in the coming uh, in this time and how do you look at it what is your take on that if you can just quickly uh, share your thoughts on that. sure sure so so i think uh, you know so i have uh, i have a very interesting story to tell here because yes. you know when i first uh, starting interacting with artisans who are kind of you know skilled enough to make some art products that's when i realized that uh, you know the these people uh, right now lack a certain point of accessibility to uh, you know for reaching out to different markets or maybe to different platforms and they were very much limited to in terms of what what design products they make right and uh, so what i did initially was that kind of provide them certain designs that can be you know made using their own skill and the, the material that they use for their craft but later on as as and when uh, you know they started uh, you know utilizing those designs they they understand the value of how they they would want to experiment and how you know the curiosity curiosity to experiment can actually help them in coming out with better designs and once that that cycle started churning out and helping them you know in in creating something which is new something which is more on the contemporary side maybe for the market they are now able to to reach out to a lot of bigger organizations and online platforms today so i would say that with the advent of what's happening today with the digital and internet penetration in india that really helped and is helping the artisans and the artists today in terms of having more reach outs and more accessibility to markets and and basically materials outside right and that's something which is kind of uh, you know which comes from two factors you know you, you need to realize how you are actually going to spend your time because you know time is 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 actually the biggest value and the biggest money that we have we all have right and how you can better utilize your time in 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 your proper reach outs in in what materials you study in what kind of <clears throat> you know uh, online education you can have and also the second part comes in where there is an acceptability of your your relative and your your basically current strength and weaknesses right for any artist or for any artisan as well so if if as an artisan i realize the value of my strength right i realize that this is something that i'm good at and i am curious enough to basically you know to utilize the strength and reach out to people today there is a lot of opportunities and market opportunities that lies for that particular individual 
right and it it it, it has all obviously uh, you know uh, quite went aggressive with with the online platforms coming in like ours as well and and with the different organizations now reaching out to different parts of india with the internet penetration i think uh, very well said sanjit i think uh, that that perspective uh, will really uh, help many of the young artists to look at how they wanted to take uh, their journey forward uh, can i talk with uh, dr hari singh about uh, understanding how, from her point of view uh, how the civil society organizations and uh, development organizations ngos are working with artisans and um, trying to bring in a change and uh, uh, what is your take on the role of civil society at this point uh, in a in a time and how do you how do you see the role of civil society in this actually civil society has got a very very important role to play and i think that uh, civil society is uh, um, at fault because they are not aware of the significance of art and craft uh, so um, as i had mentioned earlier um, creating awareness about, uh, among the people which is what we are trying to do in our own way about about art as well as craft is very very important uh, what also can uh, have been has what has been done is that many many um, groups have uh, adopted a particular art or craft and then developed it say for example uh, we are associated with the uh, uh, dwaraka which is uh, um, revived kalamkari kalamkari is actually uh, you know fabric painting on fabric with the uh, natural dyes now of course they also use uh, um, um, synthetic dyes but uh, it is a very time consuming process and the whole village was um, uh, almost starving to death and there was nobody who was wanting to buy because it was very expensive because the processes uh, processes uh, long uh, labor in incentive um and many many things had had to be done but then the thing is that um, once dwaraka took over it took, took took them about 15 years now uh, they started the civil society they started creating the market for these uh, um, these things and uh, they um, created awareness among the people that even though you are paying money that money is worth it because it is it is a it is a great art created with a lot of love and um, created it is a, created with a um, with it is a labor of love each piece is a labor of love and therefore it, uh, buy a small piece or a big sari or big piece but just buy own a piece of that um, that creativity is that is a kind of uh, uh you know awareness they created uh, among the people and uh, it worked actually and dwaraka is flourishing of course in the past 6 8 months they are they are also suffering but uh, uh, kantha is another thing which was dying and dying art um, and now it is doing very very well uh, sometimes what happens is that unfortunately um, middle men uh, here also come in uh, designers come and they just take over and they pay the um, actual artisan very little and they hike up the price and they have very high funder very um, high powered shrill marketing pitch and they are able to sell uh, create markets but then they uh, it would be sad uh, if they pocket all the profits and leave the artisans where they were it is very it is wonderful if the civil society can um, um can become a little more sensitive and can forge networks and every corner every nook and corner of india has got folk art um, a painting uh, or embroidery uh, weaving 
all these things are to be um, encouraged, supported, and who, but the civil society, if they come forward, they can do a lot of work. As a matter of fact, as uh, somebody, I think it was uh, Jai who pointed out that um, uh, various levels of marketing is there vis-a-vis -vis the art and various kinds of markets. Uh, the my art was also only considered that you know it is it is in the ivory tower. It is only for the um, elite. It is only for the rich. Only for the like the olden times, the kings and chieftains, merchants only could buy, um, invest in art. Like that, uh, people uh, uh, have become used to synthetic, synthetic stuff, used to not handwork. But we have to bring, uh, bring the awareness, sensitivity back to the handwork, the effort that people put in to create a piece of art, um, uh, uh, a piece, a craft work. Once we do that, um, then uh, uh, people, uh, less people will be starving, and more acceptance and more popularity for the um, for the uh, handcrafted pieces will be there, including uh, including contemporary art. But that can be very well done by. Uh, by the civil society. In fact, Art Mantram, uh, that is one main part that Art Mantram does. Um, one other thing I would like to point out here is that uh, 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 taking a cue from uh, my the earlier speakers, um, instead of one person, uh, I think it was Puri who talked about our, uh, uh, Jai, I do not remember, uh, they said that People have uh, slotted their time. Uh, three days they will paint, and uh, two days they will do the marketing thing. And Purvi uh, talked at length about uh, that the um, that they should artists should acquire um, um, acquire skills and um, uh, should market themselves. I would like to mention one thing here. We are doing this art soak. We are selecting ten artists and promoting them. You know, last last month, uh, two of the artists didn't even have smartphones. They only had the small phones, and they did not know what was Zoom. And uh, they hardly had anything to. I mean, I mean, we were providing their livelihood. So basically, uh, uh, we need to have networks of civil civil society and artists together um, uh, to take forward all those things. Of course, uh, Jay and uh, Apurvi are edu well educated, coming from an affluent background. Um, so, uh, you know, um, livelihood is not a problem. In fact, I, uh, I was told the other day, ma'am, please promote this person. Please include him in your exhibition. He is an MFA, MFA qualified artist he was working with a, with a company but then he lost his job and he is doing he has gone back to his village and he is doing coolie work he has given up art so um, unless we can forge relationships uh, you know a cooperation a cooperative network uh, between the civic so civic society and uh, artists um, if we do that, that would be a very, very, very um, you know, significant um, support system for the artists. One other thing I wanted to ask was ask uh, uh, these youngsters is that uh, why don't three, four of you join together? Today is a networked world. Join together and um, I know how to do the uh, Instagram uh, so I do the Instagram for all three of us or four, four, five of us. And then, uh, you know, one, one person can do something else. And so why is there a possibility of uh, three, four artists or six artists getting together and sharing these responsibilities according to the aptitude and skill can also be explored. I think. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, so my class, uh, graduated this year and, uh, we unfortunately couldn't have a physical degree show. 
and uh, we had Space One One Eight, um, which is an artist residency run by Saloni Doshi in Bombay. Uh, come up and tell us that I have an online platform, but if you guys can coordinate and put up all the material yourselves, I'll be happy to give you the platform. So um, a couple of us, uh, you know, including myself, we were a team of about three or four people. Actually, consolidated about. 10 artworks like i mean photographs of artworks from over 40 and 45 artists which is our entire batch you know going across painting print making um and sculpture and we put up all the work the descriptions you know the whatever the technical bits of it was the writing the editing and we had an online graduation show this year and it was very successful you know um we had put uh, all the direct contact details of the artists so space 118 was not making any sort of a cut from this it was solely done for the benefits of the students because saloni herself used to visit the university every year to look at the artists works and she was sad that there wasn't a show this year so i think as in when the need arises this is very much happening and just the artist community can be quite closed i think people also do help each other out when needed so I can think, uh, so can help is to explore the possibility here. of hmm. okay sorry can explore sorry. the possibility of having a structure by which artists will you know artists who need anything can reach out to the other artists and things like that um, so this so was this was only specifically a win win situation this was only specifically for a graduation show with space one wait as a one time thing and they are planning to host the degree show online every year anyway for our university so for example our show has now been live since the first week of september and will be on until the next batch graduates and then their works will be uploaded but there are other platforms um you know available online where they people can upload their works and i'm i'm sure you like you know today like you mentioned two of the artists who you were working with didn't have smartphones but i think today people are finding their own ways to do things you know they may not have phones but their friends might or there are cyber cafes i mean i think we are in a day today where you know an auto wala and you might be on the same network on a on a similar phone and because you know reliance and geo has made it so affordable for everyone to have the internet so internet is no longer luxury that it used to be at uh, one point so i'm not saying that it's a privilege which everyone has but what i'm trying to say is that it's also achievable like it is possible to get that help because most people are so well connected that even if there are a few who aren't they can very well reach out to someone else who is Yes, I think the uh, the willingness to help each other is there. Uh, the civil society's role is uh, very well defined, and uh, connecting the dots of emotions and the stories of people, which are a part of our journey of life, and connecting to the roots. I think if we can showcase that, and we can bring an in, uh, inclusive environment, so yeah. that's where I think we can we that's can take forward. that's a very positive way to look at it and while you were talking and while uh, dr dr singh and uh, purvi was speaking about this about initiatives of coming together i uh, just was just wondering why you were talking in the same line in the vision where one piece spotlight started you know, with creating a social media professional platform for the creative community where each and every artist can come together beyond the borders and can come together and join and uh, showcase their work collaborate with each other and talk about their work and uh, see that you know uh, there are new opportunities and create their own opportunities and find out a route and create their own journeys and create their own path towards uh, uh, changing things so uh, one piece spotlight has already started with uh, this initiatives and we'll be very happy to uh and we will request all of you to spread the word because we need your help and support and also we'll be very happy to uh include every one of your guidance and support and see that we do much better things and uh for the creative community 
I think with this, I would like to take, because we have already, we had a long discussion and it has been very, very exciting. I wish it goes for a more longer time, but we do have limitations and all of you are extremely busy as well. And so we are really thankful that you spend so much of your time. But uh, going ahead, we would like to have a quick uh, understanding and talk about the, the future and the digital and the online platform journey, uh, which is ahead of us, and then go to the question and succession Q and A's and because we could see that there are lots of participants and there have been lots of questions in the chat box. We ask all of you to wait patiently for some more time and then you can put across your questions and we'll take it forward one by one. And we'll be very happy uh, to share, uh, put all your questions across. And now let's uh, talk about uh, the future role of the online and the digital platform in the coming days. And um, creating communities and uh, engaging with communities and collaborating in the online world, uh, especially during the year 2020, uh, the pandemic has taught us lots of uh, new ways to look at life in a very different way. One of the part is uh, connecting online and where we see uh, online has played a very, very important role in our class. May it be our day-to-day -day working, uh, from uh, within your comfort of your home uh, to, with your organization or within your communities. Everything has changed during this year. So now in a, in a, in a present scenario where we, we are also connected, also uh, very much uh, impacted by the uh, online platforms in, a, in an online space right now. So creating a benchmark and creating your identity and making yourself visible is a very, very important thing because everyone is trying for that. Everyone wants to do that. So um, I'll go to Sanchit and ask uh, from his point of view of uh, managing an online platform where artists and artisans are uh, showcasing their product. So creating a benchmark, what are the points that quickly, if we can share with us, what are the benchmark that we should remember in creating our identities felt across in the online platform? 